All right, well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another exciting day in mathematics. Woo -woo. Warm up number four is on the screen. If you notice uh, numbers one and two, it says simplify. By now, you should be able to do that in your sleep, right? You wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, simplify expressions, right? However, we're transitioning now to uh, equations and inequalities today. That's why I'm giving you a heads up with number three and number four. Very simple. Should it take you long? And today we're going to attempt to use our Chromebooks. How about them answers? All right, being that it's Thursday, by now you guys should be experts at this, yes? So, number one. What would you get for number one? Dominic, go. Eleven. Hands if you got that. That is correct. All right, let's go to number two. Share, uh, share with your neighbor before Dominic can pass it to someone to make sure they got it. Number two, what did you get? All right, pass someone, Dominic. Joaquin? Oh, Courtney. Negative 7 to the next plus negative 3y. Is that it? All right, hands if you got that. Just about right. However, don't they have the same degree? Yes. So therefore, which one goes first? Oh yeah, the X. My bad. My bad. My bad. Yeah. All right. So with those two, how comfortable do you feel simplifying expressions from one to five? One being the lowest, five being the highest. Yeah, we got this. Yes. You're like Q. Bring it. Right. Let me go over number three and uh, four. Number three and four. Answer for this one. Let's see. Uh, negative. 69 equals X. Hands if you got that. All right. And for number five, uh, number four, X equals negative five. Hands if you got that. All right. Set that aside. Copy the agenda for today. Agenda, we got warm up number four. Today we're moving on to equations and inequalities. And tonight's home play, it's only eight problems only. Yeah, makes it sound very little, right? Only. Did you guys know that they use that uh, that strategy at 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 stores to sell you stuff? Oh, you want a TV? It's only three thousand four hundred and ninety nine. Only. All right. So. We good? Once again, warm up number four. Did we do that? Yes. Today we're moving on to equations and inequalities. And notice all this that we've been doing is just basic review. Okay? Um, however, yesterday we did get into some sets of new numbers that you uh, are going to get to know a little bit better. And tonight's home play, eight problems. So last night's home play, though, oh, by the way, copy the Nearpod code just in case uh, you don't finish copying something during the lesson. It's going to be in that presentation on Nearpod, S-N-T-M-P. And what's another place to go to see the lesson? YouTube, once again, 23 Mr. Q. Subscribe, share, and so on and so forth. I'm already past the K mark. Let's go. Right, right? All right, so last night's home play is this one. I'm not going to have you go over with your neighbor, but I am going to have you turn it in. So you're like, what? So let me show you what to do. Get your Chromebooks in front of you, please, those of you that have them. Yeah, I asked you guys to bring them, right? Okay, so make sure by the end of the day you get one from the office. Yeah? So go to Canvas, please.
You go in there for our class. This is what you're going to see. I just want to navigate you through the uh, home page. All right. So here's our math banner. It says, welcome to Mr. Pantania's Algebra 2 class. Enjoy, right? Let's go Algebra 2. And then, bam. Uh, I included some buttons here, one button for my YouTube channel and another one for Zoom. The Zoom is not live yet because, and let me tell you why I included the Zoom. Uh, from time to time, um, let's say, like last year, my AC went out. So that means I needed to relocate my class. So we ended up spending almost two weeks in the library. So think about that one without projector or anything. So what I did, I created a Zoom session that everybody was on Zoom, even though we were there, but that's how I was able to communicate with you guys in that regard. So I'm keeping that there just in case of emergencies. However, at the top left, we have a home, grades, modules, and Nearpod button. So if you click on modules, that's where you're going to do it. Every time that you need to turn in work, or need to see any assignments, go in there. So I only have two assignments here for the module algebra review. The first one is the syllabus, which you had this code. Remember I gave you guys this little paper at the beginning of the school year? Yes. You need to go there, get it signed, and submit. So I just need to go and create a report on the AirPod, and I'm going to upload your score for that. If you haven't gone and you need this, just remember at the end, come get one before you leave. And the second assignment, which is this one, six problems simplifying expressions. Wasn't that last night? Yes. So click on that, and I want you to submit a picture through your Chromebook of your home places. Those of you that don't have your Chromebooks, make sure you do that at home with your cell phones. Yes. I'm going to leave the assignment open uh, this afternoon because I know some of you don't have your stuff yet. So that's okay. Make sure you uh, get close as much as you can. Okay. All right. So, since you have your Chromebooks out, today we're going to attempt to use Nearpod for the session. Okay? So, I want you to go to Nearpod really quick. I'm going to give you a code. Those of you that don't have your Chromebook, uh, get together to you with your neighbors so like that you can uh, follow alongside with them. Here's the code for Nearpod that's live right now. HPF5W. Once again, when you log in, you type in three for your period and your name. So as soon as you drop in there, you're going to see uh, that screen, the previous home play. Okay. All right. We good? All right. So this is how it's going to go. When I ask you to participate, I will send you a screen like this one. Look on your screen. What popped up? The warm-up. So I want you to get your notebook put it to the camera, and send me a picture of your work. I want to see what you did for the warm-up. So do that right now, please. If you're next to someone, send me two pictures. Make sure you pinch it as much as you can. That means zoom in as much as you can. Okay. 
So once again, you're sending me right now your warm-up, your warm-up. All right, and just a reminder, you should have written this other code, SNTMP, in case some of those slides you don't have, uh, you're not, uh, uh, somehow it didn't upload, or whatever the case, you needed to copy it again. Tonight, go to Nearpod, type in that code, and that's going to allow you to go to the presentation that you're going to see today. Going to go super fast today, like this, watch. That fast. Why? Because it's just a review. Equations and inequalities. You guys remember equations and inequalities? Yes? You're like, oh yeah, cute. I love those. All right, good. So, with that said, uh, previous home play, you turned that in. Tonight's home play is that one. Once again, you have the code. You don't have to copy this. You can do that later because you have the code, yes? All right. All right, so let's get a Cornell note ready, please. Leave the uh, Nearpod there because we are going to be interacting with it. So set up a paper for Cornell notes. This one goes at the bottom left, and you do need a Freyer model. You do need a Freyer model, okay? So our objective for today, I can solve one variable equations and inequalities. One variable equations and inequalities. I can solve one variable equations and inequalities. What is the main idea for today, everyone? One variable equations and inequalities. What are we going to do today? We're going to solve. So we're not getting into the two variables yet. We're only working on one variable, taking you uh, uh, slowly but surely. Copy that. All right, here we go. So before we fill out a Freyer model for today's main idea, I just want to do a quick intro once again just to refresh your memory. So do me a favor, writing utensils down, eyes on the screen. All right, quick intro. Equations and inequalities, Mr. Q, uh, where do they come from? Well, they come from the idea, look up, of a scale. Have you guys seen these scales before? Uh, I don't know if you've driven through Main Street, you know, Central, or when you leave out of town. Most pawn shops or places that they have uh, – uh, exchange for coin or gold or silver, they have these kind of scales. Because I know if you go to uh, Walmart or Cardenas or whatever other store, they only have the one, one plate kind of scale now. But back then, they used this one. Now, what's so special about this one? Well, this one is where the idea of equations and inequalities come from. How does that work? Well, let me show you. If I was to place some weight on one of the sides, obviously what's going to happen, everyone? Yeah, it's going to go down. So if I place eight pounds here, this side goes down. The other one is zero, so it stays put. Well, in order to keep it balanced, what do I need to do to the other side? Add eight pounds. That's where the idea of doing the same thing to one side or the other. So I need to add 8 pounds, and there it's balanced again. But what if I go over on the other side? And this side is already 8. This one, I go over. That means that side is going to drop. That is correct. Well, guess what? This is exactly the idea of equations. Look up to the screen. Stop tapping on your screen. Here it goes. This and the table where it's standing make a sign. Do you guys see the sign? Yeah, it's an equal sign. However, if I was to add weight here, check this out. What was the original bar at? Where was it at? It was right here. Yes. But it dropped like this. So that means if I have 8, I use this symbol, 11, that's where inequalities come. They're like, what? What happened to the alligator and the Pac-Man? And... No, there it is, equations and inequalities. Why? Because that's going to keep us in mind that whatever we do to one side, we do to the other in order to keep things balanced. Good intro, yes? All right, let's get a fair model going, please. 
In the center, you're going to write one variable, equations, and inequalities. One variable, equations, and inequalities. All right. So, what are one variable equations and inequalities? In simple terms, they are two expressions that are equal or not equal to each other that contain one variable. Two expressions that are equal or not equal to each other that contain one variable, only one variable, or one type of variable. Examples, x plus 2 equals 25, or 3x plus 2 greater than or equal to 25, 12 equals y minus 8, or 12 is less than 4y minus 8. 2a equals 14, or 2a plus 8 less than or equal to 14. And one more. Negative 3 equals m divided by 4, and negative 3 greater than m divided by 4 minus 6. So, according to the definition, equations and inequalities in one variable are what? Two expressions that are equal or not equal to each other. And they have what? One variable. One variable. Okay. I'm going to zoom into the examples just so that you see it. Make sure you see it. Here it goes. There they are. So let me illustrate. According to the definition, it says two expressions equal to each other. So look up. X plus 2 by itself. Don't worry about anything to the right. Just that. Is that an expression? Yes. Is this an expression? Yes. And they are what? Equal to each other. How about this one? This is, is an expression by itself. This is an expression by itself, and they are what? Equal to each other. Same thing here, same thing here. How about these? Is this an expression? Yes. Is this an expression? Yes. But now it, it, they're not equal. That's why these are inequalities. Same thing with these. Pretty straightforward, yes? Is it coming back? Yeah? What else do you notice? That each of these only have what? One variable. One variable all through. All right. Since we're experts now, let's look at the none examples. Don't copy these. Don't copy them. Tell your neighbor why the first one is not a one variable equation or an inequality, and why is the second one not a one variable equation or an inequality? Why are those not one variable equation or an inequality? All right, so start with this one. Look up. Oh, sorry. Why is this one not? Uh, how about uh, Jaden? Why is that one not? No equal sign or no equal sign with or an equality symbol, yes. Yeah, so that means, so if this one doesn't have either or, what is that one called, people? Think about it, bonus question. What is it called if it doesn't have an equal sign or inequality? Everyone. 
expressions. That's what we started with. Yes, okay. So why is this one not a one variable equation or an equality? Pass someone. Because it's what I'm sorry? More than one variable. That's true. This one has X and Y. So bonus question. What would we call this? Two variable equations. That is correct. We will eventually get to that. Copy those, please. These are non-examples because this one's an expression and this one is a two variable equation. So if you were to send this uh, on your social media to someone to let them know what we're doing in class, what are one variable equation and inequalities? What would you say? Hashtag what? What would we write? What's so important about one variable equation and inequalities? One variable, okay, one variable. What else? Hashtag what? Equal sign? Hashtag what else? One more. Inequality, yeah, inequality sign. That's true. That's exactly what makes a one variable equation and inequality. And I'll add one more. Hashtag, write that down. Bam, let's go. Oh, yeah, we got this. So with that said, check this out. Not that I don't trust you or anything. Um, but what if I send you a screen so you can send me a picture to make sure you wrote that down? Thank you. You got this. Oh, yeah. I got this. Take a picture. Send that in, please. I'm going to make sure that you got the whole Frayer model. Go. Oh. And it reads, in order to uh, solve equation, one variable equation inequalities, there's four pieces or four components that I like to see done. Here they are. Number one, simplify each side of the equation to the smallest possible expression. Number two, isolate the variable. That means you need to leave the variable by itself on either side of the equation. From there, I want to see you plot a solution on the real number line. That means once you have the solution, just plot it. And this is because we're getting closer to graphing and such. And number three, I mean number four, check your solution. And how do we do that? Whatever the solution is, substitute it into the original one, and that should be able to come up equal or unequal, depending on the uh, situation. Okay? So with that said, shall we? Here we go. Don't copy this. This is simple stuff. I'm just going to go through a little road trip with you one. Okay? These are known as one-step equations. Why, Mr. Q? Because they, these only require one step to solve. Bless you. Now, let's see. According to your teacher's uh, processes, they showed you that whatever you do to one side, you do to the other, but inverse operations. So let me look at the first one. If we have x plus 2, what is the inverse of plus 2? Minus 2, minus 2. Therefore, x equals 23 microjordan. There it is. Right? If I was to follow the process that I read earlier, I would plot that on the number line. There's my solution. And if I wanted to check it, I would write the original equation, but instead of x, what am I going to write? 23 plus 2, is that equal to 25? Yes, and that's how you check. This one, what is the inverse of subtracting 8? You add 8. Add 8, so 20 equals y in the same process. Here, negative 2 is multiplying the a, so that means I need to divide by negative 2. And this one, m is being divided by 4. What is the inverse of dividing? Multiplying by 4, multiplying by 4. So this is negative 12 equals 
M, because 4 over 4 make a giant 1. Is it coming back? Yes? All right, let's crank it up a little bit. Look at this one. Look up. These are known as two-step equations. Why? Because it requires two steps. Here it goes. Me, I tell my students to keep organized by drawing and longing down the equal sign to mimic the balance, right? So, Mr. Cuba, now we have two different operations. We have multiplication here in between, and we have addition. Where do I start? I always start with addition or subtraction. So, if it's adding 12, what is the inverse? Minus 12, minus 12. We got negative 5x equals to 25. What was the other operation? Multiplication. So what is the inverse? Divide by negative 5. Divide by negative 5. X equals negative 5. Copy that one, please. This is example 1. Example 1. You can fit it underneath your prayer model or in the back. It's up to you. All right, so example two, we use the fraction buster, so that means we needed to multiply times a common denominator, the entire equation, simplify, we get rid of the fraction, and then we just solve. So example two Q, let's see how you do with that one. All right. I just sent you a screen. As soon as you're done, take a picture. Send that to me so I can see what you did. All right, let's see. Get us started, please. Um, Jacqueline, what is our common denominator? Uh, close, 5, 10, and 20. I mean, 5, 10, and 20. So the common denominator for all three would be 20. Yes, for all three. And 20 over 1. All right. Send me the work as soon as you're done, and we'll move on. Bless you. All right, double check with your neighbors, see what they got. So like that, I can get somebody to help me uh, finish this problem here. Yeah, I said, so don't we, we're supposed to like take a picture? Yeah, take a picture with your neighbor. And submit it in there just to make sure it has your name. That's okay. Yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, Martin, go. What do I do here? What do I write on the next step? Yeah. 40 over 5x plus equals. Hands, have you got that step? That is correct. Pass someone. What do I write on the next step? So what do I write? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hands if you got that. All right. Pass someone. What do I do next? Subtract 6 to both sides, so we end up with 8x equals negative 5. And, of course, pass it to Mr. Q, divide by 8, divide by 8, x equals negative 5 over 8. And if you got something like that, somebody's got decimals, which is fine, you know, but it's the process that I'm interested in, okay? Thank you for submitting your work. Let's go to the next one. Shall we crank it up a little bit? Oh, yeah. Copy <laughs> Example number three. 
example three. And it reads, multi, we're showing multi-step equations. Example three. And it reads, solve. Negative 8x minus 21 plus 5x equals negative 15. Negative 8x minus 21 plus 5x equals negative 15. Let's do this one together. Line down the equal sign. I'm going to walk you through the process one more time. Here it goes. Whenever you have a lot of stuff on one side, let's try to simplify the expression. So look at this one by itself. Can we simplify this a little bit more? Yes, Mr. Q. I have a negative 8x and a positive 5x, and they're opposites. That means five of these cancel five of those, and I'm left with negative 3x. Bring down the negative 21, and all that is equal to negative 15. Do we know what to do from there? Yes, Mr. Q, all right. So what is the inverse of minus 21 plus 21 plus 21? We're left with negative 3x equals 21 minus 15, that is 6. The negative 3 is multiplying, so what is the inverse? Divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3. x equals negative 2. Are we doing? Yes? From 1 to 5, how comfortable are you with that? 5 fourths, 5 fourths, okay. Do this one by yourself. Example 3 cubed. 4 equals 2x plus 8 minus 6x. I'll give you some time for that. Example 3 cubed. Go. Let's get started, please, on this process, and then she's going to pass it to someone else, and so on and so forth. All right, get us started, Laura. What'd you do? So she added the 2x and the negative 6x, and that gave us negative 4x. Bring down the plus 8, and all that equal to 4. Hands if you got up to right there. That is correct. Pass to someone. Trinity, what do we do next after that? Subtract 8 from both sides, we end up with negative 4 equals negative 4x. Hands if you got it to right there. Okay. Pass someone for the last step. Mr. Q, let's go. Divide by negative 4, 1 equals x. Hands if you got that by yourself. And you already sent that in on Nearpod, yes? All right. From 1 to 5, how comfortable is you? Yeah, we got this, right? Come on, you crank it up three or something, right? Let's go. Uh, inequality, same process, yes, same thing. However, let's do this one. Example three, no, example four, example four. My bad. Here we go. Example four. We got 2x plus 1 over 3 equals 7. Looks kind of funky. I just want to go over this one to make sure uh, you know exactly what to do. All right. Writing utensils down, look up to the screen. What makes it look kind of funky? The what divided by what? 3. So if we were to get rid of that, doesn't that look a lot easier? So that means we need to get rid of that 3. So what is the 3 doing? It's dividing. So how do we get rid of something that's dividing? Multiply times 3, both sides. Do that with me. So multiply times 3. We're left with 2x plus 1 equals 21, and the rest is history, yes? All right. Finish that one up. See what you get for x. All right, so from there you did minus 1, minus 1, 2x equals 20. Then we do what? Divide by 2, so x equals 10. Hands if you got that. All right, let's do one more. Do this one by yourself to make sure you got it. Example 4 cubed. 
There it is. Example 4Q. We got 7 equals 3x minus 4 over 2. All right. So let's see. Just for the sake of time, what did we need to get rid of? The 2. Is that correct? So that means you multiply times 2, multiply times 2, that is 14 equals 3x minus 4. From there you needed to add 4 to each side. 18 equals 3x. And last but not least, divide by 3, 6 equals x. Hands, have you got that by yourself? Oh, all right. Mr. Cupid, these are too simple, right? Am I right or am I right? All right, look at this one. Don't copy this one. Pay attention. Write your utensils down, look up to the screen. Same process. I need to simplify this as much as possible. Is that correct? However, one thing I do want to uh, point out is whenever you have an expression like this and another expression, their subtraction, make sure you distribute this negative to both terms. So this becomes 10y minus 4y plus 8, all that equal negative 20. Combine 6y plus 8 equals, what did I do? It's minus 8, yes. I did that on purpose to see if you were paying attention. Right, right. Pretty good, yeah. All right. So from there, what do I do next? Plus 8, plus 8, 6y equals negative 12. And last but not least, divide by 6, divide by 6, y equals negative 2. All right. So, Mr. Q, we run out of time. Yes, we got one more. Ready? Here we go. Copy that. Example. Call this one Michael Jordan Q. Example MJQ. Draw a line down the middle. What do you guys notice now? Variables on what? Both sides. So that means we need to get all variables to one side. I always start with the smallest one. Circle that one. What is the, the opposite of a positive 5N? Negative 5N, whatever we do to one side, we do to the other side, bless you. We're left with 2n minus 2 equals 6. Do you know what to do from there? Yes, let's finish it off. What do I do next, Dominic? Add 2, add 2. We end up with 2n equals 8. And at the end, divide by 2, n equals 4. From 1 to 5, how comfortable are you with this so far? 5, 4, 5, 4. That's tonight's home play. Enjoy. See you guys tomorrow. Bye.